Earthquakes in Idaho? What the heck? Earthquake and Idaho are not two words that I would have normally put together. And that's kind of what I thought I was getting away from when I moved here. So imagine my surprise when the earth started moving underneath my feet. Let's take a quick minute to chat about earthquakes and then what to do when one happens. And then stay tuned to the very end as I give three tips on what not to do in an earthquake. Turns out earthquakes are actually quite common in certain areas in Idaho, primarily central Idaho. And in the last 365 days, there was actually 653 earthquakes in Idaho. That was kind of surprising to me. The last big earthquake in Idaho was the 6.9 magnitude and it was in 1983. A quote from the United States Geological Survey states, most earthquakes are measured using moment magnitude scale. Magnitude is expressed in whole numbers and decimal fractions. It's a logarithmic basis of scale and each whole number increase is in magnitude represents a tenfold increase in measured amplitude as measured on a seismograph. Without going into a lot of science and math, basically what this means is that every increase in one point on that magnitude scale increases by 10 times in amplitude and 32 times in energy. The modified Mercalli intensity scale actually indicates how an earthquake is felt. So an earthquake that's registered between a 1 and say a 3.9 is not generally felt, but as you get um, 4.0 and, and higher is when you start to feel it. A 5.0 and five higher is when there's probably damage to buildings and then the damage just goes up from there. Okay, so now we have a little bit of science background behind an earthquake and at least uh, how we measure it. But did you know what to do? Well, all the experts agree that you should drop, cover, and hold on. Drop. So drop immediately to your hands and knees. This position protects you from being knocked over as well as allows you to stay low and gives you the ability to crawl someplace safe. Cover. So you take your arm and cover your head and neck and then you can, if there is a space for you to crawl to that's safe, like a sturdy table or desk, you can crawl to that if it's nearby. If there isn't a table or desk or safe structure that you can, you know, hide in, uh, safely, then you can crawl to an interior wall. You want to stay away from walls that have windows. You want to make sure that you're staying on your knees and tucked over so that you are protecting your vital organs. Lastly, hold on until the shaking stops. If you happen to be underneath a desk or a table, hold on to that desk or table leg and then be prepared. Things are shifting and moving, so you might have to move with your table or desk as it goes. Now for the three tips on what not to do. And pay attention, because I did one of the things that you shouldn't do. Apparently some stuff has changed since the last time I did an earthquake drill in school. First, don't stand in a doorway. Apparently this belief came from an early earthquake photo where the only thing left standing was a doorway. And so they believe that that was the safest place. Now in modern houses, the doorway is no safer than any other interior wall and it actually doesn't protect you from flying objects. Number two, don't run in an earthquake. The ground is moving and so you could actually fall and get hurt on the debris and glass that's already on the ground or you could also be hurt by continued falling objects and glass. Number three, don't get into the triangle of life. This is actually an email and internet hoax that's been sent around. It's based on false and sometimes lethal assumptions. For example, they tell you to get next to a desk rather than get under it. So you're no longer protected from falling debris and objects. And another one is to not stay in your car, but to get out and get next to your car. Well, the problem with that is things are shifting and moving. So you are likely to get squished by your car or hit by a motorist that doesn't see you. The bottom line is drop, cover, and hold on. Millions of people worldwide participate on October 15th in the Great Shakeout. If you'd like to participate, I will include a link for the state of Idaho down below where you can register and get resources. I'll also include a link to some free resources which can give you some examples on what to do if you're not able to get under a table or a desk. I hope this was helpful. As always, like, subscribe, and click the little bell. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.